Now that is the reason we bring a big ship. Hello and welcome. So today I have a solo ERT guide for you. We're going to go over my ship of choice and the loadout I use, the locations I prefer, a few tips in the fight, and then some advice on selling the cargo. I've been wanting to do this video all over Christmas but unfortunately I've had a cough and I'm still struggling a bit so, so I do apologise for the lack of voice quality. So let's jump right into it. So as you can see my ship of choice is the C2. And there's one very good reason for that. Just like the salvage contracts, when you do an ERTs, you're going to be coming away with large amounts of cargo. And you want a ship that is able to carry the largest containers. Now yes, some of the smaller ships do carry those, but not in the quantity that the C2 can. The last thing you want to do is be leaving any of those behind. And I think in this video, you're going to see a very good example of that. So my loadout. You don't really need the coolers, they don't do anything at the moment, but as always, I like to put the best stuff on. The shields though, I like to go with the FR86s, Quantum Drive, the TS2, and the power plant, the JS500. And the good thing is you can get all of these from one place, which is Cousin Crow's Orison. And my weapons of choice are the AD5B Ballistic Gatling Guns. You don't really need to change any of the turrets because you are going to be flying solo. And I have seen people having success with cannons, but for me the AD5Bs are hands down the best weapons. And while you're on Oris and buying other components, you can also buy these at the Crusader showroom. Now when it comes to ship combat, I'm no Avenger 1. You know, what I'm good at is flying cargo from A to B. But like you're about to see, honestly, you don't need that much skill to be successful in these missions. ERTs are supposed to be the hardest bounty hunter missions, but I think you'll agree after watching this, they could do with a little bit of a buff. So I do know the basics and that's all you need to know to be successful in this. First of all, I like to set my throttle just into the red. That way I can keep full maneuverability over my ship. I want to have a good look at all of my targets so I can decide which ones I'm going for first. I can put my full power to shields and just leave it there. I don't need any power to weapons and the fight is not going to last that long that I'll need to recharge the thrust. In this one I've got no hammerheads or redeemers but if they were here those are the ones I'd be going for first. Anything which is going to cause you the most damage you want to get out of the way with first. And then I go for any fast movers, anything that might be able to get behind me. Things like the Starfarers and the Cat, they're just slow movers and they're just going to melt under these Gatling guns. I don't want to come up my target straight on. I do have strong shields, but the thing that makes the C2 such a strong solo ship is its manoeuvrability. Ideally you want to be coming up behind your target, or at the very least have the front of its ship pointing away from you. And then it's just a case of keeping the momentum, picking your target and pulling the trigger. Now as you can see by this, the AD-5Bs just melt through these ships. And even if we did come across a hammerhead here, yeah it might take a few more rounds, but honestly they are no match. You know if you're new to flying the C2 and you find yourself taking a little bit too much damage, just boost away and come back around. With a big mix of ships all facing different ways, you can sometimes split them up making it far easier for you to just mop them up. But like I've already said, I'm not the best fighter and I have no problems. So I'm sure after just one or two goes, not only will you be getting successful at this, but you'll be far better than me. So you can see with this last ship here, the Caterpillar, I'm trying to get around the side of it. And to close the distance, I use that little bit of boost. Hardly any at all. Keeping that momentum going, keeping my roll moving, then it's fight over and I can start my scanning. It 
So when it comes to locations, Orison is my personal favourite. You're going to be picking up contracts for the Asteroids of Yella. And what I like about these so much is the ships aren't falling to the ground and destroying, losing new valuable resources. It's far easier to get the boxes out of the ships in space. And when you're doing the contracts in Hurston or Microtech or Arcor, your ships could land upside down, making it impossible to get inside, or like I've just said, exploding on impact, and then you're going to lose that cargo. Now in these ships you can have a variety of cargo. Not all of them are going to have things that you want, but some of them are going to be full of drugs. And the best ones to look out for, or maze, or like this one here, gasping weevil eggs. You know you have a lot of space in this C2, but it's the maze and the weevil eggs you want to prioritise over everything. There's no stopping you filling up afterwards, but my advice, get those in your ship first. And in this particular run, I've got very lucky and I found over 160 SCU of Weevil X. So I am not going to be greedy and take anything else. But again, this is what makes the C2 so perfect for this. If I'd brought anything smaller, there's chances are I wouldn't have been able to get all those eggs on board my ship. That is a lot of big containers. You know, you might be able to fit them in the M2 or A2, you know, and if you've got a bit of spare cash, I would recommend you trying those ships out. But as I'm a trader at heart, I've always got that C2. So for me, ERT's C2 is the ship of the choice. So now for the most dangerous part of the contract, it is going to be selling your cargo. With such large quantities, the only real place are the scrapyards, and they are pirate playgrounds. You know, unlike my last video where I had friends helping me out doing this, it is solo time. And even though not everyone on the server is a bad guy, I can assure you, if they scan your ship and they see what you're carrying, chances are they're going to try out being a pirate. So the most important thing for you is to keep your eye on the sky. Take no chances. As you're approaching, you want to be looking out for any other ships. Just because they're white and empty does not mean it's safe. There could easily be a scout, there could easily be someone on the ground, and you've got to treat everything as a potential threat. Once you have chosen your cell location, if you arrive and you're not happy, just fly away. There are other places to go to. With so much at stake, it's worth that extra flying time just to have a successful sell. When you've landed, it's guns out all the way. You've got to keep looking. Until that cargo is sold, there is a potential you're going to lose everything. And just like when you run in any cargo, when you get out your ship, close it behind you. If you are unlucky and someone jumps out the shadows and gets you, then you want to make it as hard as possible for them to be able to get inside your ship. That might be just the time you need to get back here to try and recover it. So as you can see here, I got really lucky. Just over 18 million. And I didn't even take all the stuff that was there on offer. And the best part about that, I don't need to share. Big risk equals big profit. So I really hope this guide helps you. And as always, I want to say a big thank you to everyone that subs to the channel. I really do appreciate your support. You take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.